Hey guys, welcome back to Fire Creek Forge. I've got a tip of the day for you. Tip of the day. Top of the morning to you. It is still morning here. Um, so you've seen on my canister Damascus videos with the ball bearings, all that kind of stuff, um, how I've used white paint to keep the can, the canister, from welding to the contents. That's, that's necessary unless you want to just incorporate the can into your build, which typically you don't want to do that. Now, if you guys are familiar with canister Damascus, you've probably heard of using whiteout, the, the paper, you know, mistake corrector to, to, to coat the inside of the can. That's supposed to keep it from welling. You can also use um, high temperature stainless steel foil. The high chromium content, high, high alloy content in that foil does not weld except at much higher temperatures. And so that creates a barrier there. I've used that too. I've tried the whiteout, never had, well, I've, I've tried a knockoff whiteout not had good success with that. So a couple of you uh, have asked what brand of paint, because I just say white paint in the videos. Well, as far as I know, as far as I know, any white paint should work. Should work. I don't know that by experience, but from what I understand, the, uh, the ingredient in the white paint, the titanium dioxide is what makes it white. That's a, it's a pigmentation, um, you know, for lots of different types of paints. Titanium white? That is the, uh, the component that creates that barrier to keep the contents of your can from welding to the can. So what I've used so far is uh, Krylon, and I've used two different types of Krylon. Uh, the Rust Tough Enamel is the one I've used most recently, and then I've also used the uh, Paint Plus Primer. So these are both Krylons, two different types of Krylon, and they both work great. Just a couple of notes that you have to be aware of when you go ahead and put your canister into the forge. You're going to see some burn off from the, uh, you know, the, the stuff that's in the paint, like the binders, whatever, the actual paint itself. That's going to burn off, no big deal. Also, if you don't see that, then you potentially don't have a vent hole in your canister, which is another little note too. If you don't have pinholes in your welds, which I typically do because I don't really care about having an airtight weld because you don't want it airtight, then you do need to put a little tiny, drill a little tiny hole on the end of your canister somewhere so that you don't have, you know, a big pop once that expands and swells up. Had that happen before. So, you should see some burn off uh, once you get your canister started to heat up. Not a big deal, that uh, titanium dioxide will stay in there and keep that, create that barrier. Um, I will say that, you know, I you can look at the uh, contents here and I haven't been able to find specifically where it says titanium dioxide. So, there's a, there's a slight possibility that there's some other uh, you know something else in here that does that I, i've heard also that like zinc um but that you don't want to burn that and i have not like that's got a distinctive uh, smell and uh look to it i don't think that's what it is at all um i believe it's a titanium so it doesn't necessarily ti say titanium dioxide on all the paints some of them do say that if you can find one that says that great then you know exactly what you've got like I say, these are the ones that I've used so far. They're both Krylon, two different types of Krylon. This one had more, more uh, burn off of different stuff in the paint, I've noticed, than this. So this has got less, uh, you know, goo in it, whatever. Both work great. So there's your tip of the day. Hopefully that helps you guys in your shop. Don't forget to subscribe, hit like, leave a comment, all that kind of stuff. Appreciate it. We'll see you guys in the next video.